one message. Round two with three rings for you. Let's check them out. Hi guys, and welcome back to High on Gin. Earlier this year, I told you about Three Ren Distillery and Master Distiller Nick Waitson and how uh, he has been very good at thinking, pairing and experimenting and getting an extraordinary result out of his pot still called Valerie. At that time, I tested five of his gins. And if you haven't seen that episode, you really should check it out as the five gins tested were, you know, very unusual gins with names like Bison Grass Edition and another one like this, the Apple Crumple Edition. And the five first uh, gins have, according to the Danish web shop uh, Gins DK, been very, very successful and has surprised both existing gin fans and attracted new fans with its more bold, flavorful and experimenting gins. And now there are two new gins in the series. I mean, at least here in Denmark. That is the Bloody Apricot Edition and then this very, very limited edition, the Sutan Barrel Aged Gin. So let's take a closer look at these two gins here. But let's start with this one here. The Bloody Apricot Edition is, as far as I know, made with uh, six botanicals. And that is uh, Juniper, Blood Orange, Apricot, Sweetgrass, Ginger and Coriander Seed. First, they distill the uh, six or more botanicals. And at the same time, they toast additional orange peel. And the reason for toasting the orange peel is probably because this process will add an additional caramelization, which again adds depth and complexity and some sweetness to it. Then they take the toasted blood orange peels and macerate it in the finished gin for a week to extract uh, the complex uh, orange flavors and essential oils. And that's also the reason why the gin, when you look at it, it has this very beautiful golden color. And the gin is then filtered and then bottled at 40% ABV. And just to make everything clear here, this gin here is 100% natural. No E numbers, no essences, no flavoring agents. Ah, when you smell it you really get these very, very vibrant, fruity, orange, citrus and juniper notes. But you also get this sweeter, aromatic scent of vanilla and newly mowed hay from the sweet grass. And you know, sweet grass and bison grass, that's two names for the same grass. And if you have tasted the uh, bison grass edition, uh, this one here, you immediately recognize the, uh, the smell in this one. Only in this one here, uh, that that uh, smell is not the predominant flavor, but it's more a note. I think it's harder to find the apricot in this one, but I get this little tingle in my nose from the ginger and the alcohol. Wow, so packed with flavors. You of course get the the orange and the juniper, but the combination with ginger and coriander, it, I think it makes it a bit more singy. The sweet grass, again, is very recognizable with its vanilla, hay-like kind of taste. And it has a pretty long aftertaste. You know, in a gin and tonic, it's very, very obvious to mix this with a Mediterranean tonic from Fever Tree. But since they're both pretty sweet, I think you should balance the sweetness with just a little piece of lemon, just to, as I said, balance it. Another combination that you should try is the Bloody Spritz. This is the combination of this gin here, 5 centiliters of Bloody Apricot Gin, 15 centiliters of sparkling wine and 5 centiliters of soda, and then garnish it with some grapefruit peel. You know, you get this very fruity, festive and very fun drink. It is perfect aperitif for welcome drink. The second one here is then the Sutan Barrel Aged Gin a very, very limited edition with only 200 bottles made. So if it's sold out by the time you decide to get it, I think you should pay some attention anyway, because you know this one here really shows what Nick does best. 
play, combine, invent, built. But you know, you know, he's still true to the jinn. So he's not revolutionizing things, but he's evolutionizing things. And as the name of this one here indicates, this one has been resting for weeks in a Sutan wine barrel from the 2015 vintage Bordeaux. And that year, as far as I know, has, was a very, very good year in Bordeaux. Sutan is often characterized by the balance of sweetness with the zest of acidity. And some of the common flavors uh, notes in Sutans are apricot, honey, peaches, but with this nutty uh, note. And have those uh, notes in mind just for, for a second. The gin itself, you know, that is put in the barrel is made of 18 uh, different botanicals. I don't know them all, but I know that there is, uh, of course, juniper. Well, that's pretty obvious. And then there is angelica, but there's also apricot, peach, lavender, and Sicilian lemons. And if you think, why Sicilian lemons? Is that, is that just for show or, you know? These lemons are actually known for having, you know, mo much more fragrance in them, uh, much more juice. But, and again, at the same time, much, much less acidity. So now he builds and adds to the famous flavors of the Sutan with the peaches, with the apricot, but he managed to, I think, um, you know, add this new layer and, you know, add this complexity to it. The much higher ABV here, the 47% ABV, you know, it just makes it so much more exciting. Uh, the alcohol is not harsh or sharp in any way, but it's a very smooth and silky alcohol feel. I think sometimes the Sutan in general is a bit too sweet, but even though this one is sweet, it's not too sweet in my opinion. As always, let your nose get get acquainted with this higher ABV. And once it has, you know, get used to this ABV, these beautiful, subtle, fruity notes of apricot and peaches, you know, hints of flowery notes of lavender starts to pop up in your nose. You get the sweet sotan, but it's very obvious that this one here, the base here, has been extended with more depth and complexity. Wow, you know, it's more powerful in the taste. You get both the peaches and the apricot combined with this uh, citrus uh, zestiness and this slight, uh, slightly spiciness to it, probably from ginger, I would guess. You know, and then it's all carried by the, the, the ABV. It rolls into these very fine aftertastes with its fine woody tobacco feel. A bit like when you smell a back of pipe tobacco. And just as a fun note here, my dear wife was like, oh no, not a barrel aged gin. I'm not just fond of these whiskey-like gins. And then when she tasted this one, she actually went, wow, this one really hits a spot and is probably the, uh, the first one she truly loves. And, the, and I concur. I mean, I really, really love this one here. Nick says it makes a killer martini. You know, the gin combined with a dry vermouth. And I will most definitely try that out. But you know what? I love it like this, just like meat. Mm, love it. So guys, my advice to you is this. If you're looking for something new, something fun, something creative, take a closer look at my previous video and combine it with this video here, and then decide what gin from Three Rens Distillery you want to try first. If the Satan Barrel Age is out of stock, Follow the distillery, follow gins.dk for more creative projects from, from uh, Three Ring Distillery. It is not the last time I'm sure that we will see new and very interesting things from Nick and his distillery. And it's not the last time that I will check them out. Until next time.